Spook the Witch There was a game the neighborhood children and I used to play in the woods of Dorset, Vermont. The game was called Spook the Witch. There wasn't a specific number of kids needed to play the game. Some nights, we'd have over a dozen kids out there in the moonlight, and other nights we'd only have maybe three or four. Those were the scarier and much more exciting times to play, because that security blanket you have with numbers had been taken from you. The goal was to split up and go our separate ways into the woods, but still heading in the same direction to see who could get to the witch's house first and spook her. Being kids and not believing or trusting enough to use the honor system, we had to grab an item from where the witch lived to show as proof that we were there. I'm sad to say, in the year we had been playing this game, no kid had ever spooked the witch of the Dorset Woods. Gus, a husky kid, claimed to have made it in her house, grabbed a handful of her hair before making it back to receive more praise than anyone in town could ever hope for. It didn't take us long to figure out he had managed to find a clump of animal fur stuck to a broken branch and thought he could fool us. That was one of the good times, but I now remember why we stopped playing and never returned to Dorset Woods. A few weeks after the hilarious animal fur hoax, we went out for another try. None of us knew it, but Gus was distraught that he had been teased all week and that this time he wasn't going to be made a fool. Eight of us, including a suspiciously quiet Gus, ventured out into the woods this night. Seven of us returned empty-handed and laughed about how none of us came close until we realized Mikey wasn't laughing, but crying. Through his tears, he told us that he watched from the tree line as Gus marched right up to the witch's house. Mikey said he walked up to the door as if he was on a mission, and before Gus could open the door, it swung open, exposing a disgustingly short, naked woman with very long, unkept gray hair, illuminated by the moonlight. Mikey took multiple deep breaths between tears before he finally managed to say, She grabbed Gus. He shouted for his mommy, but, but his screams had already been muffled by the door closing shut for good. I knew I couldn't do anything, so I just ran and ran. Spook the Witch was a fun game until that night when we found out that she was playing the game too. Martha's Handbook Gather round the fire, children, and let Grandpa tell you a story about a lady named Martha Bell. People in the village believed her to be a witch and were very frightened to be anywhere around her, oftentimes heading in the opposite direction if she was heading towards them. She lived in a cabin on the outskirts of the village, nestled deep within the Black Mill Forest. Not even the bravest of the villagers would venture anywhere near Martha's cabin. As a matter of fact, it was almost an unwritten law to never even go near it. A rhyme about Martha started to spread across the village youngsters and would even be told by parents to their young children before bed to warn them of the dangers of Martha and what happens when you don't mind your parents. The rhyme went like this. Martha Bell, Martha Bell, if she hears you crying, she'll drag you straight to hell. So be good and never bad, or she'll steal you from your moms and dads. She'll hang you up 
one by one. Until you're dead, then her deed is done. That rhyme terrified the children of the village. They would do everything in their power to stay away from her, even crossing the street if she came towards them as she walked through town. She wore all black, her face covered in a black lace veil. Her hair, which was the color of gray, was wrapped tightly in a bun, and she always, without no exception, carried her handbook with her. Now, children, there are only two books I know of that you must never read from. Those are the book of Stoolzebub, the demon of shit, and unholy excrements, and the other is Martha's handbook. No one really knows exactly what was inside Martha's handbook. Some say her spells and incantations. Others say the handbook held the secrets of the devil himself, written in its pages. Whatever the case, she would play a game with her handbook. She would leave her book laying out, and whoever would pick it up to try and give it back to her she would unleash a blood-curdling shriek right in their face, snatch her book from their hand and storm off. But the frightening thing is, whoever picked up her book would later disappear. Twelve children in total were never heard from again. Their bodies were never found, and nobody knows what happened to them. Are their spirits lost? and roaming the woods near her cabin. Perhaps. Who knows for certain. But what I do know, children, is this. If you see an old handbook just laying around, resist the urge to pick it up, for you might be the next to get a visit from Martha. I would like to give a heartfelt thank you to the special friends of the channel for your overwhelming generosity. If you would like to support the channel, the link is below in the description. Also, please send me your stories and poems to duchessofdarkness27 at gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram at Duchess Dot of Darkness and Twitter at Duchess of Dark and Two. I want to thank all my listeners for your kindness, your encouragement, and your support. It means the world to me. Thank you for joining me. Until next time.